Hey everyone and welcome to the second Let's Max Warframe of the day where we're going to be taking a look at the brand new weapons in 22.4. We've already taken a look at the Bowser submachine gun, so let's take a look at the other one, the newest polearm on the block, the Casa War. Like the Bowser, you can find the Casa War in the Tenno Lab and the Dojo and it does need researching. The research costs aren't very high at all and don't include anything that's going to be particularly hard to farm. Most of it honestly is going to be stuff you've got stockpiles of anyway. We don't unfortunately know what the build costs are going to be, however we do know that it has a mastery rank requirement of 5, so it's probably not going to be too bad. Once you've got it built, you get a pole arm with a base damage of 70, which honestly is kind of middle of the pack when it comes to the class that it's in. The largest part of that damage is in slash, with almost as much puncture and a little bit of impact. The crit chance of just 6% means that a traditional crit build just isn't going to work very well, especially with only a 140% multiplier as well. A Maiming Strike build, I mean, it does work just because of how strong Maiming Strike is, but without that, I wouldn't go anywhere near a crit build with this whatsoever. Status, on the other hand, it comes with a 28% status chance, which is really, really nice. It doesn't take much to be able to make this proc regularly at all, and it's high enough where you can sacrifice even some status for a normal elemental mod for additional damage. It also means that we can put our condition overload on here to be able to take advantage of the extra damage every time that we get a status prop. It is really, really solid from that point of view. Adding to all of that the fact that it's got some really nice range to it, 8 meters with prime reach on there, and yeah, we're going to be spreading those wonderful status procs all over the place and on multiple things. And with a 1.17 attack speed, it's already decently fast before you even go anywhere near anything like Primed Fury. In terms of the stances, there's a decent amount of choice here. We've got Shivering Blight, which fits the polarity of the stance slot, or Bleeding Willow and Twirling Spire that don't. My choice of stance is actually Shimmering Blight, because it's my favourite out of the three stances. It's fast, it's got a bunch of high-hitting strikes, which are good for knocking flying enemies out of the air. It's really good for momentum and movement as well. It's just very good, it's very fluid. I wanted to like Twirling Spire so much, because it's a brand new stance. But to be honest, the first swing is so lacking in momentum, it just feels very, very clunky and awkward. So in this case, I feel that it's an oldie but a goodie, but Shimmering Blight is my preferred stance. With that in mind, how did I go about modding the Castle War? Well, I went with a very elemental status sort of heavy build in the end. I do have a second build that's more focused around Maiming Strike, but to be perfectly honest, I was more impressed with the elemental one. Let's start off with that though. Three former, bringing up the weapon to a total of four V polarities. I've got Prime Pressure Point on there, Primed Fury, Primed Reach is going to give it that 8 meter range. Condition Overload's on there for more damage each time we proc status on a target. Drifting Contact to keep our combo counter up and give us a little bit more status. Then two dual stats and Primed Fever Strike. On here I went with Pure Corrosive to try and maximise our armor stripping capability. However, you could go with Straight Gas, uh, Corrosive and Heat for more proc types. Gas and Electric, there's a ton of stuff you could do. I would try and keep the Primed Fever Strike in there because of how strong that is, but if you can't then the weapon is definitely going to perform extremely well still. In terms of Maiming Strike build though, it's kind of tough on room because there are a lot of mods needed to make it worth it, too, honestly too many in my opinion. I only went with this build in the end because I could cover the loss of Drifting Contact with Power Strike from Naramon. Uh, we've got Prime Pressure Point on here, Primed Reach. Um, condition Overload, Blood Rush for crit chance as our, crit, uh, as our combo counter goes up. Maiming Strike is going to raise our base crit chance up on a slide attack and that gives more for Blood Rush to work with. Organ Shatter for crit damage. Berserker on attack speed, uh, well for attack speed on crit basically. And then Prime Fever Strike for toxin damage as well as extra proc that it can give. Honestly you could switch out Berserker for another elemental mod. Say, for example, the um, the dual stat electric mod, and then you could have corrosive on here. And um, because the base attack speed is so good, that you could actually sort of you, you could get you could sort of sacrifice that if you wanted to. But honestly, I wasn't too impressed with this build. Perhaps there are better ways of getting a maiming strike build to work. And honestly, I would love to hear your suggestions on potential ways to tweak and to to take the build in a different direction in the comments below. So, what do I think of the Castle War? Do I think it's worth building and maxing out? And you know what? Yes, yes it is. I'm always honest with you all, and today is no exception. No, this is not the top dog pole arm. The Legion's still stronger, as are some of the Zor pole arms that you can craft these days. However, in terms of the weapon itself, it shouldn't be relegated into that eternal meme of mastery fodder, because it simply isn't. 
Take a look at the footage in the background now. That's four level 120 Eximus heavy gunners dead in about 20 seconds. That's no mastery fodder. That's a weapon showing it can deal with the hardest content that we've got in the game right now. Those stage three sortie void survivals and not only deal with them, but do it extremely well. The range is extremely competitive with the top end of the pole arms. It's the same as the top end pole arms. That means you're going to hit a lot of enemies at once and really shred through them. It's a very good pole arm and not one that I spent any time wishing I was using something else. I find that there can be a tendency to gravitate towards the strongest, the best, the meta. But honestly, while those top end weapons are going to kill quicker, yes, I mean, that's obviously going to happen. That doesn't mean that anything that isn't the meta is garbage or quote unquote mastery fodder. And the castle war shows that clearly to me. It's solid, it kills well, and it's going to deal with anything you can throw it up against. Plus, then there is the absolute favourite feature of the Castle War, the looks. Who couldn't look at this and be amazed by how incredible that design is? I am a massive fan of it. It's super, super cool. So, looks and performance in one package? I'm sold. Especially from a Mastery 5 weapon too, upgrading to this is going to be a good thing to do. Even though you might not have all the primed mods, it's still going to perform extremely well. I like it a lot. I think it's worth building and playing around with. It is definitely decent. So I hope you enjoy my look at the Castle I have some more Warframe videos coming soon, including one on Azor that I'm currently playing around with and could be extremely good. But for now, many thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next video.